Jordan, thank you so much for cycling in to see us. Did you cycle here? <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Have you seen the weather outside? <laughs> no, it's shocking. So you would be New Zealand's best known cyclist. You've been a professional cyclist for almost 15 years. Tell me how you got started. Oh, pretty much when I was at school I played soccer and cricket and badminton and tennis and I was pretty lousy pretty much at all of them. <laughs> and the people that brought me up, I was brought up by foster parents and, and they were into cycling and their family was into cycling and, and I noticed come around school one day asking for volunteers for a race and I had a 10 speed so, so I pitched up and, and ended up racing that weekend. Oh cool, and how did you do? Uh, I got last. <laughs> <laughs> I was a long way behind everybody, wow. but I liked it, so you know I just kept plugging away at it. How interesting that you don't actually have to be instantly good at something to develop. Yeah, I, I guess it comes down to wanting to be good at something, yeah. and, and I don't like losing, so yeah. the objective was to win a race. So, so once I'd won a race, then I wanted to win a bigger race, and, and a bigger race, and so on, and so on, and so on. So how old were you when you started? I was 15. Okay, was and then how long before you won a race? I was 15. Oh, okay. So you were pretty serious quite quickly. <laughs> I, I won my second race. Wow. Okay. So, so it was just a case of figuring out how it worked and, and how the, the, the strategy of cycling unfolded and, and training. Yeah. Okay. So a combination of thinking and doing the work. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Brilliant. And you went on to win a medal in the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, so I've raced four Commonwealth Games and it took me to my third Commonwealth to win a medal. I, I won a medal in the, the time trial in Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, and it, it was a bronze medal. It wasn't the gold that everybody wants, but you know, for, for a guy that originally everybody said that I wouldn't ever even represent New Zealand to yeah. it. Who said that? Who said that? Pre pretty much most people that saw me when I started. I, I wasn't very good, so you know, it was just hard work. Yeah, so diligence rather than natural talent, you think? Yeah, yeah. I, I believe that every athlete has a gift and and my gift was, was hard work and, and never giving up. Yeah. Not everybody needs to be the most physically gifted athlete in the world. Sometimes it's just mental toughness that that's your gift. Right. Okay. So tell me about that moment where you're standing on a podium and you get a medal. I'd love to know what that's like. It, it, it's pretty cool. To be fair, a lot of it is blurred. Anyway, you, you, you finish the race, you're really tired, you get, you get put in the hot seat. So basically, the, the hot seat is where people sit that are, that are waiting to the, the, the middle positions. And if somebody beats them, you're off the hot seat. So I had to sit there for a while hoping that nobody betted my, oh, the time that I'd done. Hard. That would be really tough. It, it was pretty cool going to the hot seat and asking somebody to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. So you're sitting there, and how long do you have to wait until you find out whether you won? I, I was lucky. I was one of the last starters. I'd, yeah. I'd finished sixth in the previous Commonwealth, meaning I was the sixth last competitor to start. Okay. So I only had to wait sort of 10 minutes, but one of the guys was there for a good hour, so it would have been yeah. pretty nerve-wracking for yeah. him. Yeah, you'd lose a lot of weight sitting there sweating, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, it was a hot day as well, so yeah, I probably lost heaps. <laughs> so tell me, are you standing on the podium, what goes through your head? Uh, I, I, th there's a lot of emotions. Uh, I'd been trying really, really hard to, to win a medal. I'd been knocked off my bike three months previously and broken my wrist, so there was there's a chance I wouldn't even get to yeah. the games. Yeah. So, you know, I, uh, some of it I was trying not to shed a tear. My wife was there as well, and, and she doesn't get to see me compete very often, so, yeah. so it was pretty cool. Awesome. Now, the broken wrist, that's not the only injury you've ever sustained, is it? No, so I've broken both my collarbones, a finger, I've broken two bones in my wrist, and in January I had another crash and broke both my legs. Wow. So, yeah, it was, it was less than ideal. Wow, so that's less than a year ago. Yeah, so that was January this year I broke both my legs. Wow, and so what's the outlook for your career from here? I would imagine breaking both your legs could put an end to. So, so originally uh, I was told that I, I would never get back to an elite level again. Yeah. Uh, with me that's kind of like red rag to a ball. If you say <laughs> that I can't then generally I'll try to do it. Yes. And so I've been racing back at elite level now for three months and in two of those months I haven't finished off the podium in a race that I've been at. So you're saying that in the last competitive races since breaking your legs you've always finished in the top three? Yeah, for the last two months I've, I've managed a podium every race that I've been at. Wow, that's exceptional. Hard, hard work. <laughs>
Okay, so now it's quite interesting to understand the mindset set of, of a medal winner. So hard work, I'm hearing, what else? Uh, you have to just really want it. Yeah. It, it, it's the same with, with every part of my life. I, I, I coach cyclists now, I, I'm semi-retired as an elite rider, I, I race. Mm -hmm. I have two or three big months a year where I, I really train and, and it's usually around this time of year uh, the Tour of Southland is my favourite race, so so for the months leading into that and for that race, I aim to be in, in my best condition for the year. Yeah. But it's the same with other parts of my life. I, I coach for a living, yeah. so my objective is to have every one of my athletes that I coach being the best they can in their age group and to have the biggest and the best coaching company as well. So yeah. so I, I'm sort of like that with, with everything that I do. I'm, I'm usually fairly driven. So both in your own career and in your coaching, what are the three things that you, you try and get in there? What are the three ingredients for success, would you say? Hard work, motivation, and visual, visualization. Okay, oh, so you use visualization techniques. We touched on that earlier. Yeah, yeah, I do. You know, every race I go to, I, I'm thinking months out how I'm gonna win, yeah. and even thinking of what sort of victory salute I'm gonna do when I cross <laughs> the line. You know, that, that doesn't mean I, I always win. You know, there can be 200 riders in a race and only one can win. Yeah. But I figure that if I have a number on my back, then I might as well be the guy that's gonna win. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for that insight into the mind of a winner.